We'll be testing the agility of a bay boat style catamaran, the SeaCat 260 Hybrid. This is where the catamaran style and the bay style blended so perfect together. Let me tell you, cats have been evolving and this one I can't wait to get on. She's got some features we're gonna love. Aboard the SeaCat 260 Hybrid, a hybrid catamaran designed to comfortably cruise the river and venture beyond the inlet. The SeaCat 260 Hybrid has an overall length of 26 feet, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Built for handling rougher waters and floating shallow, she has a draft of 14 inches, a dry weight of 4,900 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 120 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Today we're on the SeaCat 260, and first thing that came to my mind was you got a bay boat and a catamaran boat, and the styles just combined together and became one. You know what? You're right, Lori. One of the disadvantages of a lot of bay boats is having enough room inside. They're skinny and they just are limited. One of the great advantages of cats is having so much interior square footage. I'm anxious to see how they added the square footage to this and how they used it on the SeaCat 260. That's a good point, Rick. And you know what? It seems like we run a lot more cat boats. I mean, year after year, we see more and more of them. And I've run a bunch of them. I've never run one that was a really an inshore boat. So I'm curious myself to see how this thing's going to do. The ocean on this day was not cooperating due to a hurricane swell closing the door to the Jupiter Inlet, but we found what we needed inshore to gain confidence in the 260's ability. The ride on the model we tested was that of a high performance boat capable of extremely high speeds due to the power choice. This boat can be rigged with as little as a pair of 140's and up to 600 horsepower, which is exactly what our twin Suzuki 300's provided. A top speed of 65 miles an hour seemed much faster and at a cruising speed of 38, we were seeing two miles per gallon. At the helm, a pair of Solix 12-inch MFD units with Chirp radar fit nicely on the panel and all quality Bocatec switches are used. A meticulously neat wiring scheme inside of the console is laid out in an easy to understand system which also comes with a schematic explaining the function of each wire from switch to battery. A twin LeBrock seat set in front backs up to a roomy tackle center rocket launcher in the cockpit. An interesting design feature on the 260 is the way these boats are set up with independent batteries and fuel tanks for each engine. This allows you to always have the security of knowing that you'll have one engine to get home on if the other one fails. The design of this hull is such that the 260 will easily handle running speed on a single engine, so you're not limping back to the dock at trolling speed. What happens when you're dealing with a beamy cat boat? Well, for starters, Lori and I were sitting up in front of the console on this seat up there Plenty of room, much more than you'd see on a 26-foot V-hole. Any boat that's fishing in shallow water has got a platform for somebody to stand up there and cast. The SeaCat 260 Hybrid has a casting platform so big that Lori and I weren't even aware that each other were fishing off of it. The bow seating completely blends in with the large Ford casting deck. This is where the catamaran style and the bay style blended so perfect together. Having the catamaran style gives you the 8-6 beam throughout the entire boat. There was no waste of space today. There is storage under your port and starboard lounge seat, storage under the step up to the bow, and multiple storage compartments on the bow deck. One of the things that makes the SeaCat 260 so versatile is the fact that she's got a trolling motor on her. She can go as far offshore if you want to, but when you come back in short, you can silently creep down a row of docks or flip up under a mangrove. The very word hybrid means that this boat's capable of doing so many different things. You're gonna need offshore tackle, but you're also gonna need the tackle for flipping shrimp up under a dock. You can store it all in the tackle station behind the helm. There's a rigging tray there, there's a cooler. It is an excellent use of space. Let me tell you, they broke down the stern to do a whole lot of different things. First off, you can flip the seat up and you've got a great place for cruising the intercoastal. Flip it down and you've got an excellent casting platform. You need live shrimp for stopping by a dock on the way home, you got a live well for that. You got live blue runners to chase sailfish in the live well directly across from there. The stern area of this boat may be the very definition of a hybrid boat. Guys, you know, I own a bay boat. 
So I was looking forward to today because I'm sitting there going, Bay Boat Catamaran, how is that gonna work? Well, it did, it worked. It was, she ran great today. You know what, Lori, I'll tell you what it did for me is, I was curious about how is a cat boat gonna work in the backwater. As it happens, it's blowing 25, 30 miles an hour today, and we weren't able to get this boat out in the ocean. Jupiter Inlet just said, no way. But the versatility came out in the boat. We had to pivot and go in the backwater, and look how well it did back in that skinny water and in those tight quarters, it was great. You guys are both right. Why combine a cat and a bay boat? Because a bay boat gets in the back country and a cat has lots of real estate and is very, very stable. You wanna see what it means to fish on a true fishing platform? You need to check out the Sea Cat 260.